From an early age, we're taught that learning to be a leader will give us the keys to the kingdom. But what about learning to be a good follower? It may not have the same ring to it, but as WSJ's work family columnist Sue Schellenbarger is here to tell us, it can be every bit as crucial. Hi, Sue. Great to see hey, you. So something tells me that selling follower skills is always going to be a little harder than selling leadership skills. But isn't there a connection? Absolutely. Uh, of the stars at work, the great leaders, uh, almost all of them, again, a good number two at some point in their career, according to Robert Kelly. He's a leading researcher at Carnegie Mellon. So also when you look at the bulk of a company's work, really how much of it gets done by followers? Well, the studies vary. It's hard to measure, but most people estimate about 70 to 90 percent of the produ production of a company is done by followers. So that would indicate to me that interest in the field of so-called follower skills must be growing. Absolutely. Um, online, I found a real burgeoning of new scholarly research on followership and more books are being written. One reason is that we're having more remote work and telecommuting. You really need to be a good follower to do that. And interestingly, social media, the role of follower on social media is kind of drumming into people the idea that these are reciprocal relationships. So what does it take, Sue, to be a successful and skillful follower? It's a pretty good bag of tricks. You have to be a self-starter, a problem solver, take responsibility for shared goals. Um, you have to be willing to deliver criticism when a leader needs it, and also to make up for your leader's weaknesses and fill in the gaps. Well, that sounds important. You say being able to deliver criticism to your leader when it's necessary. But that can be tricky. Do you have any advice on doing that? I mean, you certainly don't want them to kill the messenger. <laughs> That's the big risk. It's terrifying. Needs to be done, though. And at first, after you've established a trusting relationship, one way to approach it is help me understand your thinking on deciding to sell the company. Another option is to, to ask to meet off-site at a neutral relationship and just be as direct as you can. I really want to help you succeed, and I'm not sure you realize how the, the troops saw that speech yesterday. Um, here's how they read it. So just to be as open as you can, it takes, you need to take risks. It's important, definitely, for sure. Now, Sue, I still think that people might shy away from embracing the follower role, though, because there are some stereotypes out there that can be misleading. Isn't that right? Yeah, we're a long ways from people stepping up and saying, I want to be a great follower. You know, people think of the follower as the docile sheep or the, you know, the uh, yes person, um, not something anyone wants to be seen as. But if you look deeper, um, those stereotypes really don't apply to the followership we're talking about here. And it's also, I guess, worth remembering that many great leaders were once great followers, right, Sue? Just about all of them. And when you're a great leader, you're still following somebody. I mean, you know, even if you're a CEO, you have to listen to shareholders. If you're high in the hierarchy, you probably have a boss. So most of us play both roles simultaneously. Very good points. Thank you so much, Sue Schellenbarger, for that. Thanks, Tanya.